Good morning, I'm Mabel Jong reporting from the World Healthcare Congress and I'm so pleased to have with me Didi Benke, who is a GOP strategist, and also sitting next to her is Steve Laser, who has a show called Making Sense with Steve Laser. And we started the morning with a very exciting debate on whether the Accountable Care Act is helping or hindering. Didi, you first. What is your thought on that? Well, Mabel, I think we should scrap the whole thing. I think it's a complete failure. Uh, why am and, I not surprised by that? Yeah, why are you not surprised? Uh, but I really think that we will win the midterms. We'll have the opportunity to come up with an alternative. And we're going to have to do that because Steve did make a good point in the debate. He says, look, I mean, if you can think you can hang your hat and win the midterm just about complaining about Obama, now I think we will. But we still need to replace it. It's important, but, you know, it is just not working. It's bad legislation. Look. Obama folks didn't even come. That says something. This is a very important conference. Where are they? Well, it's failing. I wouldn't show up either. Okay. And they just had 7 million people sign up, and they're trying to make that a victory. It's not. It's a big failure. 14 million canceled. So it's a net zero, less than zero. Okay. Well, Steve, 7 million is, has been touted by the Obama administration as a great number. It was a goal that they were trying to hit. So are we on the right track? We are on the right track. And the point that I made right out of the gate is that there was a before, there's a during, and then there's going to be an after. The before is somewhere around 40 million Americans didn't have access to really what is great health care in this country because they didn't have health insurance. So that is really what the Affordable Care Act is, is about. It's about getting as many of these folks who didn't have access to the great health care in this country access. Um, get them preventative care, get them access, get them to be able to see doctors. But, you know, to Didi's point, the last two polls, I want to talk about that. The last two polls that we've seen from Washington Post, ABC, show that it's about even now, the amount of people in this country who are in favor of and against um, the Affordable Care Act, that is trending in the favorable position. So I have been saying for months on every single appearance on Fox News that if the Republicans think that they can win the midterms on the Affordable Care Act, they're in for a rude awakening. More people are liking it every single day, and I think actually... When it's all over and done with, and I've said this before, they laughed about it on Fox News when I've said it, Democrats are going to be able to run, excuse me, Democrats are going to be able to run on the Affordable Care Act, and they're, they're actually going to win seats on the Affordable Care Act when it's all said and done. Okay, well, we'll, we'll certainly see about that. Now, Didi, I need to go back to what you said about the plan. I believe uh, Treasury Secretary Tim, Tim Geithner said that a plan is better than no plan. What's your plan? I don't think going from the frying pan into the fire is a good plan. It's a bad plan. So it's like, oh, okay, we have a plan. Even if it's bad, at least it's something. That's ridiculous. Look, I mean, Bobby Jindal has a plan. Uh, Dr. Ben Carson has a plan, as well as, you know, Simpson Bowles. That was good. But, you know, those were all blown off for whatever reason, especially Simpson Bowles. It shouldn't have been. It was a good plan. Obamacare is a disaster. It's not working. Steve is very wrong. I mean, we're, we're going to have to make a big wager here because I'm telling you, midterms will be won by Republicans. That changes the landscape because many of us want to repeal it. I'm one of them, but some want to change it drastically or at least change it. But right now, it just is not working. That is why they're going to lose the midterms. Okay, so Didi, let me just follow that up with, do you have any specifics on what you would like to see for your own personal health coverage? Well, I really would like to see, first and foremost, not to see 27-year-olds getting free health care. I'm not getting free health care. Why should a 27-year-old get free health care? I mean, that's nuts. I mean, what, they're living in their parents' basement, doing nothing, and they're working, and they're just being lazy. I, I just think that is a very bad policy. So I don't want free health care. I don't think they should get free health care. Uh, so I really think that we should be able to have our choice. I just would like for the president not to have lied. You can keep your health care. You can keep your doctor. Well, that was a big, fat lie. It didn't happen. And I'd like to have the choice. I want the free market to work. I am a capitalist. I want the free market. I don't want the government telling me what to do. Okay. Well, Steve, she is saying a lot of free here. I don't think that's really what we're talking about, exactly free. So, so let, me, let, me, let me back into some of the stuff that she was talking yeah, about. Free, right? So those 27-year-olds who are being allowed, well, actually it's, actually, it's up to 26-year-olds who are being allowed to stay on their parents' plans. The reason is a lot of the entry-level jobs that these folks are getting out of college don't have health insurance offered to them. So that's why they have to stay on their, on their parents' plans. Um, as, as far as... <clears throat> um, what was the last thing that you talked about? <laughs> you named so many different things. Yeah, well, it's all bad. Um, so I take the last word. But, look... The reality is, is that what the Affordable Care Act looks like today is not going to be what it looks like in five years or ten years. I 
the thing that I'm most upset about Republicans, and she talked about Simpson Bowles, she talked about some of the other plans. The House Republicans, who had control of the House, didn't really push a whole lot of these things. What they wanted to do was beat up on the Affordable Care Act. They didn't really want to help. They didn't really want to propose their own solutions. As a matter of fact, a month and a half ago, they passed some of the first fixes that we've seen to the Affordable Care Act. It was stealth. It was done under the radar. It was hidden in a Medicare reform bill because they don't want to be seen as helping the Affordable Care Act. That's what's most important to Republicans, the political stuff about this, not helping people. That's the problem. Hopefully we'll see more from Republicans actually trying to help people get coverage and get care. That's the real thing. I'm not tied to the Affordable Care Act. I'm tied to solutions and people being able to get health care. Okay, Steve, I'm, we're going to have to leave it there. Right. So thank you, and I, I think nice it's going to be We are hard. trying to help people. <laughs> <laughs> I think it's, I think are you guys going to agree on that? Yes, we, okay. agree. we agree on that. <laughs> okay, well, thank you to you both. Thank you, Didi Benke and Steve Laser. I'm Abel Jong. Thanks for watching.